Okay, well, we're actually talking about food allergies. And if, ah. if you have friends with kids, if you ever tried to send them to school with a cake, you realize that food allergies are just skyrocketing. Children can't take peanut butter and they jelly can't. anymore. They right. can't. They right. can't. And actually, it's over doubled in the last 20 years, the incidence of allergies in children. I was going to say, because when I was a child, Everybody ate peanut butter and jelly. Totally. And Skippy was king and right. Jif was queen. And exactly. You know what I mean? It's like, really increased. It really has, right? Yeah. And, and the that's not is, just me being old and not cranky at about all. it. Not we at all. We really are much more allergic today much than we were. Much more. We have yeah. 8 million children in this country that are allergic to some kind of food. Why is it increasing? Not 100% clear, but there are theories that we've sort of over sanitized our kids and given them antibiotics, disrupted actually the healthy bacteria in our guts, which then disrupt our immune system, our reaction. Action. So what's going on is your body is going to release histamine and other chemicals, which then can cause, and you see the yellow is the allergy particles, triggering this burst of histamine. That can actually cause anaphylaxis, where your throat can swell up. You see it swelling up here to the point where you may not be able to breathe. This could be life-threatening. So up until now, the only advice was, well, avoid whatever triggers your allergies and mm -hmm. carry an EpiPen. But now, earlier this year, there was a breakthrough because the FDA approved the first treatment for peanut allergy, which actually involves... Wow. Yeah, this That's is huge. big. That's one of the most common huge. childhood allergies. It involves giving minute particles of peanuts. So it's coming in this cap pull-apart capsule here. You see it here. There's peanut powder in there. You can add it to sol semi-solid food like applesauce, and you slowly introduce this in minute amounts to your child. Have to be very clear, this is done under the supervision of, of an a allergist. Doctor. An yeah. allergist is specific. uh, specifically. Right, right. right, not at home. But this is actually going to, it's not going to cure an allergy, but it could help prevent one of those accidental exposure severe reactions. Right, you don't have to be frightened every time your child right. goes to a birthday party and maybe or goes to a gets restaurant. And little exposure, mm -hmm. right. And then, of course, why are the cupcakes here? So baked goods is another strategy now, because some kids are allergic to the raw milk or dairy um, or eggs, but they're not allergic when they're in baked goods. So again, oh, wow. under supervision of a doctor, an allergist, you can try introducing baked goods, small amounts, so they build up their tolerance. Such great news. Yeah. So fascinating, Dr. <laughs> We're going to talk now about 3D printing. And this is amazing because organ donation. This is someplace in an area of medicine we really need innovation. If you think about all those people waiting for waiting organs, and, waiting, and yeah. some of them don't make it, unfortunately. So now we have this concept of 3D printing. I have one here. This is made out of plastic. And this is layer by layer, the human heart, a model of it. This is something that's used for medical students and education. Mm -hmm. But now we're actually able to 3D print organs, human organs, made out of human cells. So I want to show you a graphic here. Isn't this that is incredible? Right. So the ink Think that's being used. Think of how many lives could be saved exactly. with this technology. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. It's huge. It's huge. And so you're using human cells as ink in this printer. You hear, see here this type of cell, the stem cell, it can grow into almost any type of tissue or organ. In this case, they're growing it into a heart cell. And then they're making this ink out of these heart cells. Layer by layer. Layer by layer, they're going to the machine print. Print. Oh right. God. I know. It's unbelievable. Mind blowing. It's going Prince to print stem cells heart. that make a heart. Right. And then this actual model, this heart, which is made out of cells, is put into a bioreactor. It's surrounded by fluids that actually make it grow into the heart tissue. Now, this hasn't been grown into a life size functioning heart right now. But in Israel, they have actually made a smaller version of it. And you can see here with all these chemicals and everything helping it grow into a beating heart. They've actually had a heart beat. Not life size yet, but still, it's an amazing technology. And we I have actually, chills literally I know, everywhere. And I, I know. I'm, I'm almost bursting into tears, I have to tell you. It is. This it's going to help so, so many people. Oh, my God. This, yeah. is, this is so incredible. It's and here we actually have this is something that's being done now, heart valves. 3D printed heart valve. My father-in-law had a heart valve replaced. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a very common uh, operation as we get older, but you know, to be able to print one out of human cells is just unbelievable. It's so mm. exciting. It is. It's really exciting. What an exciting time yeah. to be in medicine. I know. I agree. I agree. Now, how far is there any sort of guess as to how far off this is? If we got no. a heartbeat and it's, I know it's heartbeat, tiny. Heartbeat, it's small. I, I think it's probably in the next few years that we're going to see this. Yeah. Uh, it's just incredible to be alive right now in a time yeah. with such great progress. I agree. I oh, agree. that's weird. I just touched a heart. <laughs>